Well, good afternoon and a warm welcome to you all from the Royal Parks of London and a special welcome to St James's Park for the feeding of the pelicans. My name is Mark, I'm the park manager and to jo join me to feed the pelicans today is Hugh, our senior wildlife officer. Hello Hugh. Good afternoon Mark, you okay? I'm fine, thank you very much. Well, lovely day for it. Yes, good afternoon to everyone that's come to join us today as well. Um, so the pelicans were ready for feeding, but a couple of them have now jumped up on the bank. Do you think they'll come and join us in a moment? I think they will shortly. What is it you've got to feed them with today? I've got roach today for them, which looks a bit like this. It's quite a small fish and it's what they'd eat in the wild. We have a question from Anna on Instagram uh, and she says, do they eat a certain type of fish? So is it only roach that they get? So in the wild, they would probably eat anything they could get their bills around, which, as you can see, is a varied range and quite quite different sizes. But um, but here in St James's Park, we've been feeding them roach mainly recently. But they have they have eaten other fish b before here, including trout and, and whiting. Uh, yes, I can only afford a piece of mackerel at home. I hear you gave them rainbow trout. Is that correct? <laughs> they have had the odd <laughs> have had the odd rainbow trout from time to time. Uh, lucky things. Do you think we can get them to come near near to us now then? Yeah, I think I'll be able to tempt them over. I'll just pass a few down to them. So how many pelicans do we have here in St James's Park? We've got six pelicans in total in St James's. And what type of pelicans are they? They're great white pelicans. They're a species that are native to Europe and also parts of Africa. And I believe we've had pelicans here since 1664, uh, when they were a guest from the Russian ambassador to King Charles II. That, that's spot on. I can tell you've done your homework. They've, they've been a part of the park for, for a very long time. And they're, and they're very much part of the heritage of the park here. So a very long tradition. But of course, these aren't the pelicans from that long ago. Uh, where have these pelicans come from? Yes, Mark, you're right. That, that would be impossible for these, these birds to be the same that were, were here 350 years ago. Um, these ones were actually all but one donated to us um, from Prague Zoo uh, over, over the last few decades. And, uh, and they've been very good to us in that respect. One of the pelicans, however, is actually, well, the romantic story is that she is actually a wild bird. Um, she probably was never a wild bird, but she came to us uh, about 25 years ago from, from a garden in South End of all places. They're beginning to get a taste for the fish now, but I see they've also got competition from herons as well. Is that usual? Yes, there's always, there's always a few competitors hanging around, and the herons in this park are particularly wily. They're also quite good at knowing when feeding time is. Oh, so the heron, heron had that one. So you have to be pretty good with your aim. Clearly my aim was a bit off there. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, it, usually it's half decent. And how much fish do you normally give them each day? So we, we normally feed them about a kilogram of fish each day, which is typical actually of wild pelicans. They still burn a reasonable amount of energy here in the park. Um, and, 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 and as you can imagine, a kilogram is quite a lot of fish for, for a bird that probably only weighs about eight kilos. Now the ones at the front have got brown plumage. Does that signify anything? Yes, the, the ones at the front are actually um, only about 18 months old and it takes them some time to reach their um, full mature brilliant white colour. It could actually be at least another six months before they get that lovely colouring. Now we've been asked a couple of questions uh, from um, um, subscribers on Facebook and Instagram. Um, why do they have such a big bill? And we can see that uh, quite, quite clearly now on the ones that have come close to us. So they have this enormous bill because they need something to support um, the throat muscles beneath, which, as you can see, is this big extended pouch. And uh, really, it's an adaptation that they've developed over millions of years. And I'm talking millions of years because pelicans have been, been around for probably around 30 million years. And, uh, and they've gradually developed that over time to become a very, very useful appendage for catching fish. 
So they actually use the bill a little bit like a fishing net, don't they? And they pick up water as well. Yes, the bill, the bill is essentially a large fishing net and they have really capable, powerful throat muscles which can eject the water once they take a big scoop. There was a, a wonderful limerick written back in 1910 about the pelicans. I don't know if you know it. A wonderful bird is a pelican. Its bill can hold more than its belly can. He can take in his beak enough food for a week, but I really don't know how the hell he can. Have you, have you heard that one before? Well, <laughs> that was uh, from American Dixon Lania Merritt, uh, which I think sums it up quite nicely. Oh, the, the, the herons got in there again. So do the pelicans all have names? They do all have names, Mark, and I suppose you're going to challenge me to that now. Um, I think you need to tell us who they are. So the three new pelicans at the front, which you can, which you can see quite clearly, the, the, the brownish coloured ones, are called Sun, Moon and Star. Quite, quite quirky names which we decided to keep, um, and they were their original names given them to them at Prague Zoo. The three older pelicans at the back are called Isla, Tiffany and Gargi, and they've, they've, been, they've all been with us for some time now. Now, Gorgi is the pelican that's free-flying. I hear she went AWOL a couple of weeks ago. Yes, Gorgi did decide to go on a, a short holiday down to Staines-on-Thames. Um, she took flight on Easter Monday evening, um, but we think probably that she didn't like Staines that much because she came back home within 48 hours <laughs> and, uh, and flew in ready for her lunch. Her friends were quite happy to see her. <laughs> Uh, but I understand they've also been on uh, a few walks lately as well. They have actually. They've, they do seem to have become quite adventurous recently, possibly due to lower footfall in the parks. And uh, six of them were actually spotted by a runner on Birdcage Walk crossing the road. And a little bird told me they used the pelican crossing to get there. Is that correct? I've got a feeling, Mark, that that's probably just rumour. <laughs> Matilda from Facebook asks, uh, have we ever had any baby pelicans in the park? Well, that's an interesting question, Matilda. And, and no, sadly, we haven't had any baby pelicans in the park. But actually, there is a reason for that. And that's because we've got such a small flock of them here. And having more than six pelicans on this lake would probably be a little bit too much for this water. Um, as you can see, they're enormous and they are predatory. So we like to keep this the flock small. And we don't have any plans for any baby pelicans at the moment. I understand one egg was laid back in the 1980s. There was an egg actually laid back in the 1980s, but um, I suspect that that was probably uh, that was that was probably accidental and um, and almost almost certainly uh, infertile. I never realised that pelicans made a noise like this before. They do love a good roar. And actually, the, the, the dominant male characters really, really can roar quite loudly. So two in the distance have had enough. But I understand there is enough fish in the lake for them to uh, carry on eating for themselves if they want to. Is that correct? That's right, actually. In, in the late summer, when we've got big shoals of fish in the lake, they're more than capable of feeding themselves. They actually work together in a team, or it looks like they're working in a team and they corral the shoals of fish and, and net them with their, with their bills, which is always a pleasure to see. And on those days, they're completely disinterested in my semi-defrosted -defro fish. Now, tomorrow we celebrate the anniversary of VE Day. Um, obviously, we'll all be celebrating from home for obvious reasons. But the bird keeper, Thomas Hinton, who would have been here in World War II years and would have been here for VE Day, I understand whenever he fed the pelicans, he wore a bowler hat. Uh, can we expect you to be wearing a bowler hat tomorrow for tradition? Um, Mark, does it look like that's something I'd have in my wardrobe? Uh, no, I won't be wearing a bowler hat tomorrow. And, and I'll eat my hat if there's a shop that will sell me one. Um, I rather thought you might say that, so um, I, I've got a bit of a substitute for you, Hugh. Um, bear with me one moment. Um, not a bowler hat, but I think it's something for far more appropriate uh, for the weather we're having at the moment. So, uh, um, so there's a Panama, which becomes your new your new uniform. <laughs> And the birds get fed every day at the same time, even, even Christmas Day, we were saying. They do. Every day of the year, there's always someone here to feed them. 
They'll always get a meal, even if they're disinterested. And something a little bit special on Christmas Day, such as rainbow trout, maybe? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> And so I believe pelicans do fish in shoals, which seems to be the activity they're displaying at the moment. A um, couple of them go through and disturb the, the water, um, uh, and the others ca catch the fish. Is that correct? Yeah, that is a good observation, Mark. They do do that. Um, they're actually, they're probably not doing that at the moment. They're probably chasing after one that I've thrown in the water, but they, it looks really similar to this when they're working together to corral fish. And it's looking like they've almost had their fill now. So uh, after this, what do they do? Go and have a lie down for the day? <laughs> well, pelicans are famous for their loafing. And, uh, and once they're full, they'll go, and, they'll go and rest up on their rocks and, and get ready to roost. They'll probably have a bit of a preen before that. So you've got uh, half a dozen fish left in the bowl. Um, do they just go in the water or do you give them to the herons or, um, or do you leave them for, to, uh, for the side for later? Good, good question. But actually, pelicans don't suffer the same problems that we have when it comes to bacteria in their food. And uh, these will keep until tomorrow in the fridge. No problem at all. They seem quite happy now, don't they? They do. Uh, among themselves. They seem very relaxed. Well, thank you to everybody that's asked questions. I hope that we have covered most of them um, that we've received in advance. Uh, and I'm sorry uh, if we weren't able to answer yours. But thank you very much for watching with us today. We hope you've enjoyed it. So it's goodbye from St James's Park and from me and Hugh. Goodbye, everyone. Stay safe and well from us all at the Royal Parks. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>